to get on the record before. I'd just like to uh, pick up uh, where I was and continue on now. I think the Minister probably still has a list of questions he hasn't answered. Uh, so let me add to his list. We were talking about the ramp, that's right. Um, I'm also interested in, um, and I'm sure the Minister has noted my questions on the hub, um, at, in Calgary. Um, so if he's able to give us, is there any money from this budget that is going toward that Calgary Media Hub? Um, I remember last year he, there was a sum of $10 million and then when I questioned him in the budget debate it was less than that and I'm just wondering if there's any money in this budget and if there is, how much is it and which vote number does it appear under um, that is going toward that uh, Calgary Media, Creative Hub, I'm sorry, Calgary Media Creative Hub or some variation on that theme is what it's called. Um, I'm also wondering, I mean, it's a pretty big deal. How come it's not in the ministry plan? Um, or is it in the three-year plan? Because this isn't a three-year budget projection particularly, but uh, if it is part of a three-year plan, could he lay that out for us? Um, and what exactly is the government's role going to be in this? Because it's always been a bit of a sticky wicket, this one, because um, the Edmonton... Um, uh, film studio was privately funded entirely um, and has since been um, bought by a different group and is being operated differently um, but uh, it's it's a it's a large outlay of money um, to actually uh, build one of these and it's been a struggle and over the years I don't know, there's probably been four or five um, of these Calgary studios that I've heard were going to be built, and it's always an extraordinary amount of money, which usually is enough to stop it, and eventually it all trickles away, and then four or five years later you get another version of it. So I'm hopeful that this one is successful, um, but if I could get a bit more detail about what the government's involvement is in it is, uh, and what the money is and where the money is, that would be uh, terrific. Um, Okie dokie. Um, okay, go ahead and uh, answer those questions. Um, first of all, I think other initiatives we we were we we're getting through that, and there's there's a we would be more than happy to send you a list of all of those, um, and it's very similar to the list that we talked about last time, but it's uh, Canadian Theatre Festival Society Magnetic North Conference for part of uh, the Calgary um, 2012 uh, bid, um, the Olympic Tribute Gala at Commonwealth Stadium, Atlas Coal Mine Historical Society, got the Glenbow Museum, um, uh, Canadian Sports Hall of Fame, Alberta Creative Hub, which last year we gave 1.2 million, sorry, last year we gave 1.2 million dollars, but we will gladly give you a copy of those. The, your next point was about the Wild Rose Foundation and where that money came from. We, we have an $8 million endowment for that, and we get the $325,000 would be interest on that on an annual basis. And we use that money towards the Vitalize Conference, and then the ministry tops up the difference, and I think this past year was about 700 and some thousand dollars that we spent on Vitalize, so 325000 or thereabouts would have come out of this endowment fund interest and then we would we would um, we would top up the rest of it um, in terms of the voluntary sector um, we're talking about a human resources strategy I'm trying to remember we've gone back and forth with a bunch of different the salary levels are lower in the nonprofit voluntary sector oh and the, in the in the salary levels and that's always been a problem in that uh, the wage gap, the wage gap versus the people that are in the sector versus any other industry or any other sector, especially oil and gas when you're in, you're in Calgary and uh, the professional sector here in Edmonton uh, versus government workers. Um, we have a human resources strategy um, process that we're going through right now to try to deal with some of that and uh, come up with some concrete measures because, again, that's something that's repeatedly brought up in the dialogue sessions, but the 30-some years I've been involved in the sector, that continues to be a problem. 
and um, we talked about two point uh, the capital or the heritage sites, and we have an inc uh, two point three million dollars in capital towards the heritage sites, and um, we uh, we will continue to do what we can towards um, uh, making sure that they're uh, they're up to date, um, but we do not have a large outlay at this particular time for any large capital uh, intensive projects. But what line would that be on? No, no, but this is 2.3 million in capital heritage sites. Under voted capital investment by program, page 84. Okay, so where's 2.3? Yeah. Under heritage infrastructure, it says two million there, mm -hmm. and there's also on page 89. If you look under capital investment by program under heritage, it's 2.330. Okay, the other two million is a voted amount. Now, with respect to RAM, I had that here. Um, we have fifty million dollars uh, budgeted for this this coming year, uh, and this budget uh, fiscal period: seventy million for 12-13, 60 million for thirteen fourteen, for a total of one hundred and eighty million dollars. And as you mentioned about the uh, two museum concept. That's something that was uh, mentioned back, I remember the Premier mentioning it back in December of 2009. The original, the original design for the, uh, the very large building at the Glenora site totally um, encompassed the, um, the government house. And it, it had, it was, there was not respectful of it. That government house is, a, is, a, is an icon. It's a heritage piece, and we had this huge monstrosity just completely overshadowing that. So we looked at um, oh, doing it all in one or looking at two different sites because the costs were, were comparable. And um, we will move forward. Right now we're focused on finishing the Atchison site because we have to have a place when we start construction and we have to close the museum for a period of time. We've got to have a place to be able to put all our artifacts and that will be the Atchison site, and, I, and uh, hopefully that will com be completed this fall. Um, I'm not sure about this, but in order to, can't. But um, we need that in order to be able to move to the next step. And lastly, on the Creative Hub, um, the Creative Hub, yeah, it's a great deal of money, but it's, um, it's something that we need. We have coming forward this spring, we've got Heartland coming for its fifth season. Um, and working out of warehouse space is inadequate. We have Hell on Wheels by a, a production AMC uh, for AMC, the, uh, the American Network, uh, through Nomadic Pictures here. That's going to start filming in the, in the I think, the, sometime next month. And then we have Sam Steele Movie uh, for CBC and Night Productions, when that, along with Nancy Lang. That's going to be filming here starting sometime in May. So we need this kind of space. The, um, it's Calgary Economic Development that actually will manage the, the studio, uh, or sorry, the manage the, um, of going forward. It's a not-for-profit entity that we set up, and that was the, we put $1.2 million towards that last year, and that was to come up with a governance structure, come up with a not-for-profit organization that the money would flow through from all levels of government. That was also for, <clears throat> to go out and hire a consulting firm. Lawson Projects, which is a combination of architectural firm, an engineering firm, and uh, real estate expertise. They went and looked at the site that we had looked at and, and, and chose a Can Olympic Park to see if one, that was the best site. And looking at all the other prospective ones, and it was. <laughs> close proximity to the mountains on the way out to Banff, and, um, and good access uh, and only 20 minutes from downtown Calgary. And, um, what they have done is they came up with a business plan. Um, they had uh, the, the different levels of government take a look at it to make sure that it was feasible. Uh, that's the federal government and the city of Calgary. And um, 
Uh, we, uh, it also asked 60 representatives from the industry whether they would participate and to which level would they participate in the new creative hub if it was established. And uh, overwhelmingly, they said that they would, to the point where $45,000 of office, 45,000 square feet of office space has already been spoken for. And uh, we don't have any money in this particular budget for that, so I would have to go through the process of asking uh, Treasury Board for th those dollars. And uh, we haven't had a chance to be able to do that. But it's something that's a number one capital priority after the uh, Royal Alberta Museum in my department, and we will continue. <laughs> Barscona will be second, third. Honourable member. <laughs> Seriously, the Barscona Theatre would come after this creative hub? Yeah. When I'll it's been mine for longer? I'm glad to tell you why. Well, <clears throat> I'd respectfully disagree with the minister. I think the Barscona has been waiting longer, and there's leveraged money that's waiting for it. And I don't know how long the feds and the city are going to hang on to their money waiting for the province to come in on that one. So we could be chucking some money there. So uh, I would urge you to uh, fund that one faster rather than slower. Um, just a couple.